The Tennessee House expels two lawmakers. Why critics say it violates free speech. Plus, the Secretary of Energy visits Oklahoma for a big announcement. And what you need to know for your Easter forecast. This is OU Nightly. our democracy. That is what's happening in the state of Tennessee. Two Tennessee House representatives were expelled yesterday. Democrats Joan and Pearson were protesting in favor of gun control. The decision has been criticized by Democrat politicians and civil liberties groups who say the move distracts from gun violence. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Morgan Martin. And I'm Pepper Papura. The expulsion of two black, now former Tennessee lawmakers is causing some confusion. OU Nightly's Carly Vargas is live from the OU Law School with some, with how some are reacting to the decision. Carly. That's right, the Tennessee House voted to expel representatives Justin Jones and Justin Pearson, and many are questioning whether or not this is discrimination. I sat down with an OU Law student to get some perspective. Um, I wasn't surprised when I heard about the situation. The Tennessee House voting to expel their representatives. I think it's very typical for black people to be treated in the way that Representative Pearson and Representative Jones have been treated. Three Democratic lawmakers protested in favor of gun control just a few weeks after a deadly school shooting in Nashville. Jones and Pearson were the only two expelled, a move that many are calling racially charged, including the only representative who was spared by one vote. I think it's pretty clear I'm a 60-year-old white woman, and they are two young black men. I, I, in listening to the questions and the way they were questioned and the way they were talked to, it was completely different. The controversial vote also leading some to believe that it violates free speech and the right to protest. They're being reprimanded so harshly for something that they don't deserve. They should be able to protest something that um, about an issue that's extremely important to them, that's important to their constituents. The House has only expelled members twice in the history of Congress, once for sexual assault and once for bribery. Reporting live from the OU College of Law, Carly Vargas, OU Nightly. Thanks, Carly. Vice President Kamala Harris is meeting with those two congressmen expelled today. While she addresses them in Tennessee, her husband is here in Oklahoma. On top of his duties as a second gentleman, he and the Secretary of Energy are announcing plans to invest in the state. They say the goal is to attract higher paying jobs, working with cutting edge technology. OU Nightly's Dakota McDowell Wakichi reports. Oklahomans are celebrating across the state after the U.S. Department of Energy made an announcement here at Oklahoma State University in Stillwater. Nice. Oklahoma State University has one of the 37 industrial centers funded by the United States Department of Energy on college campuses across the nation. Today, some news brought joy to OSU's president, Casey Shrum. Regional University partners, I want to thank the secretary for the great news she shared with us today. And that news was... Today, I am proud to announce that we are awarding nearly $19 million to five universities who will host new IAC Centers of Excellence, including the Great Plains Center of Excellence right here at OSU. Grinholm says the Great Plains Center of Excellence is the first step toward a different America. We want all these products made in America, stamped made in America, used here and exported elsewhere. We want all that wind that the governor was talking about, all those turbines, we want them made in America. We want all the pieces, the supply chains made in America. One the, the Industrial Assessment made. Center at OSU will give students the opportunity to change the future. And the thing uh, that is so important is that it does give students this hands-on ability to see uh, technology in action, to see how to reduce 
carbon emissions, price of energy, reduce energy use on site. Now the second gentleman met with Chickasaw Nation Governor Bill Anatubby at the First Americans Museum after leaving Stillwater. He then went on to meet with tribal nations leaders on OU's campus. In Stillwater, Dakota McDowell Pikichi, OU Nightly. Our visitors say this initiative is part of a bigger plan to get manufacturing jobs that moved overseas back to the U.S. And it's been so nice out today and with it rolling into Easter weekend, I'm hoping this weather can stick around. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this warmth, but you know, my allergies, it's really getting to me. Peyton Absolutely. Galleon has a look at the current conditions outside. Peyton? That is right. It has turned into a beautiful day. Temperatures in the upper 60s and 70s across the state. 69 here in Norman, 71 in Lawton. But I feel like we can't have nice things because with these warmer temperatures, just look at the allergy index. That tree pollen is in that high category, whereas grass, weeds, and mold pollen is still relatively low. I am sniffing and sniffling and sneezing, but coming up in Maine weather, I'm going to talk more about that fire weather warning, the weekend warm up, and your Easter forecast. Thanks, Peyton. Conflict is continuing to rise in the Middle East as airstrikes are exchanged between nations. Hear why the Israeli military says it's on high alert. And two more states are restricting gender affirming care for children. Find out which states are going to feel the impact coming up. Tensions boiling over on the Israel-Lebanon border today. Victoria Anderson has that and the rest of today's national and international headlines from the News Center. Border tensions escalate in the Middle East, now leaving two dead. The conflict erupting in airstrikes, rockets and gunfire between Israel and Lebanese groups. All this after a week's-long worth of tension, starting with an Israeli police raid at a Jerusalem mosque Wednesday. Experts say this is the largest show of violence between both countries since the 2006 war. Indiana and Idaho are joining a growing list of states rolling back gender-affirming care for minors. Their new laws criminalize medication and surgeries for transitions, also requiring minors on these medications to stop taking them by next year. Today, Kansas is passing a similar bill, if approved, will be the 14th gender-affirming ban in the nation. Idaho is also passing new legislation restricting travel for abortion access. Anyone helping a minor reach abortion access in other states now faces two to five years behind bars. This includes any aid from money to transportation. The bill goes into effect next month, making Idaho the most abortion restrictive state in the nation. And the Kennedy political legacy continues today as Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has filed election paperwork to run against Biden in the 2024 election. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Victoria. Norman is getting a jump start on Easter tonight. The Easter Bunny will be making a special visit in the city. And it's warming up outside, but these dry conditions are a recipe for wildfires. Coming up in Maine weather, Peyton Galleon is going to tell us about the fire risk across Oklahoma. Peyton? Yeah, that's right. Right here in campus, we don't have that fire threat. But coming up, I'm going to tell you where in the state they are on edge. Welcome back to OU Nightly and taking a look at the South Oval right now. It is a beautiful day. You can see not a cloud in the sky. I'm surprised more people aren't outside enjoying this lovely weather. 68 degrees. Once again, clear skies. That um, dew point is relatively low, 19 degrees. It's going to be very dry and that wind also is very high, almost 20 miles an hour. That's what you need to take in consideration for that fire danger I'm going to talk about later on. But across, across the rest of the metro, once again, upper 60s, lower 70s, overall a great day across the state of Oklahoma. But once again, these dew points, you can see just how low they are. And once you get into the panhandle, they are in the single digits. That is crucial for fire weather. And drought conditions are also horrible up in that panhandle. But along the I-44 corridor, you can see where parts of the state have gotten rain and where parts of the state have not gotten rain. And looking at these wind gusts, you can see 
pretty strong across the main majority of the state. But once again, I'm going to point out that panhandle. You can see gust in the 20s, closer to the 30s. And that is where we have these red flag warnings you can see in Guymon and only two counties across the state of Oklahoma. But that does not mean other counties need to be like we don't have to care about this because this weather we have going on, it's dry, it's windy. Anything is possible with the fire weather we had the last few weeks and taking a look at the big picture. You can see that rain is clearing out and going throughout the rest of the weekend. We're going to be fairly clear here in Norman until about Sunday afternoon and overnight. You see these storms starting to pop up in western Oklahoma, which is going to relieve some of that dry temperature, but I don't think it's going to be a lot to ruin those Easter plans. So you can see for your Easter weekend, warm temperatures, pretty clear, maybe partly cloudy skies, but nothing's going to ruin your plans. And as we go in through the rest of the week, we're finally warming up and I want you to take advantage of these temperatures. 69 Saturday, 69 Sunday, 69 again on Monday. We do have that chance of rain from Monday, so keep that in mind, grab that umbrella. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we are back into the upper 70s. Not a lot of rain chances until we get into the latter half of next week. We no severe weather chance in your forecast. So enjoy these next few days and we'll be back right after this break. Thanks, Peyton. Easter weekend is here and the city of Norman is ringing in the holiday with their annual spring egg hunt in Andrews Park. Oh, you know, at least Mecca Thompson is live there right now. Mecca, have you seen the Easter Bunny yet? Ladies, I have not run into the Easter Bunny just yet, but I did make a little friend here and you can get these balloons made tonight here at the park. And if you take a look behind me, they just set up the spring egg hunt banner. The beanstalk snow cone truck is here. And I also got the chance to speak with one of the planners behind the event. And here's what's in store for later on. We start at 5.30 with some activities. You can get your pictures with the spring egg bunny. Uh, and it's, uh, we've got snow cones, we've got face painting, all, all the fun stuff you would see. Uh, then at 6.30, uh, we sign, uh, sound the sirens with the fire department, police department, and it's a go, and it's usually done in about 10 minutes. So there's a lot of Easter fun happening here at Andrews Park today. Come out, have a good time. Reporting live, Mecca Thompson, OU Nightly. Hello and welcome to Big Friday Sports. I'm Kenzie Iserman. And I'm Addison Arthur. Today we have a swinging show, so let's head into the most talked about event this week. The Masters is in full swing right now, and it's coming down to who's going to make the cut. Coming into today, three people were tied after the first round with hopes of winning the green jacket. Brooks Kepka is in the lead, and Sooner alum Abram Answer is currently at even par. As exciting as the leaderboard is, the action was delayed today due to weather, so let's swing it over to our weather team for a quick update on the weather in Augusta. Yeah, that is right. Looking at the radar around Augusta right now, you can see several pop-up showers even down south in Wrightsville. We do have a severe thunderstorm morning. Play was suspended earlier this afternoon, then it resumed, and about an hour ago it was also suspended. Grounds were evacuated even after a tree fell near hole 17, but this rain does not look like it is letting up anytime soon. Just look how strong this cell is right just south of Augusta, and the rain looks like it's going to be a problem pretty much for the rest of the tournament. Going into tomorrow's play, there's a 100% chance of rain, and you can see that temperature drop to 51 degrees, just that cold front coming through, dropping these temperatures again on Sunday, 61 degrees, rain is in that forecast, and winds are not going to let up either. So definitely something players need to take into consideration. Thanks, Peyton. And in the first game of their series against Texas Tech, OU softball Avery Hodge had an outstanding diving catch in the outfield. And offensively for OU, Haley Lee hit a bomb for her ninth home run of the season. The Sooners shut out Texas Tech in an exciting 3-0 win Thursday night. Head coach Patty Gasso says she liked the team's execution in game one. A lot of times if you have two of the three parts of your game working well, you're going to find ways to win. And that, that's really the story tonight. But I thought um, their plan and their pitchers coming in the way they did um, offset us a little bit. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they bring tomorrow because I'm looking forward to seeing how our team's going to respond. 
On to the next diamond, the OU baseball team took an early lead, but unfortunately didn't have the same outcome in Waco. The game was tied 4-4 until the Bears pulled away in the bottom of the seventh. The Sooners ultimately dropped the series opener at Baylor. The next match of the series is tonight at 6.30 p.m. The spring game is just right around the corner, which means football season is almost here. Head coach Brent Venable says he's excited about this year's team. I really like the group of guys. They worked really hard competing and straining. I see a lot of strain. I see uh, a lot of competition um, across the board. You can go through every position group and talk about competition. And uh, got a few guys banged up, the normal bumps and bruises. Uh, but really appreciated guys having the right mindset showing up with a mindset of improving, getting better. Well, they are in Augusta, but OU Women's Golf started play in the Big 12 match tournament in Scottsdale, Arizona today through Sunday. Six Sooners will rep the Crimson and Cream playing two rounds on Friday and one on Saturday. Then the top eight teams will advance to the semifinals. On the tennis courts, OU men's tennis showed out on Thursday against their Bedlam rivals. OU defeated OSU 6-1 away from home. The Sooners will close out the regular season at home and host Baylor and Texas Tech next weekend. Over to the women's team, it'll be a battle of closely ranked teams as the number 18 Sooners host the number 19 Pokes today at 5 p.m. The Sooners currently have three players ranked individually and the reigning national double champs Carmen and Ivana Corley are ranked ninth. Our own Parker Abel sat down to talk with senior walk-on walk Blake Seacat about his time at OU and how much the Sooner basketball means to him. Here's his story on Seacat's Sooner Connections. What does it mean to be an Oklahoma Sooner? Legacy. It's a family thing. You may see Grant Sherfield and Tanner Gross suiting up for the Oklahoma Sooners, but there is more to the team than just the bucket getters. Blake Seacat is a senior walk-on for OU, and he is living out his dream. I, this is just where I've always wanted to be. I mean, I grew up an Oklahoma Sooner fan and knew that this was my goal from day one. And I just can't believe that this dream actually got to come true. It's really everything you'd ever want. While suiting up for OU may have been his ultimate goal, it's not always easy being a walk-on. And Blake has to realize it's not always about him. Adjust to things and not everything's going to go your way and that's going to be all right. You got to be able to just roll with the punches and help out any way you can. That's all it's about is just helping. But for Blake, it's more than just basketball. He does this for his grandfather. He used to play here back in the 50s, and I just really do it for him. He's he's not with us anymore. He never got to see me play at OU, but he definitely has always been watching, and I always keep going for him. While Blake Seacat might sit at the end of the bench during the game, his impact on the team is bigger than you might think. To be a walk-on, you got to be selfless, and Blake is selfless. He comes every day. I know he battled an Achilles injury, so half, his, half my time with him, he's been battling injury, but when he's been around, He's, he's selfless, he cares about the team, um, does whatever he needs to do, wherever he needs to do it. Uh, he's been huge in the program, he's been huge to me and my brother I know, and, and just, you know, outside of just being a really great teammate, he's a really good friend, and so um, it's always good to have, have someone like that on your team, especially being a walk-on, it's not always the easiest life. And on senior night for Blake, he got to get on the court at the LNC one final time. Parker Abels, Sooner Sports Pad. Coming up next, we'll tell you what it takes for the Thunder to earn a spot in the playoffs. And a new professional sport is heading to Oklahoma. We'll give you details on the new team. Don't turn away. Welcome back to Big Friday Sports. Pickleball is quickly sweeping the nation among all ages. OU Knightley's Brooklyn Suite heads to OKC's hub for the sport for more on how the sport is growing locally. Chicken and Pickle host the fastest growing sport in America. This is just the beginning and then we're going to blow up. Think of pickleball like this. It's played on a badminton sized court with tennis sized wiffle balls, but the sport is played at a ping pong pace. The venue now home to the newest professional sports team. Congratulations, Oklahoma City. You're only one of six cities in year one of 2023. The National Pickleball League recently hosted a combine to look at players from around the world for the upcoming draft this month. 
I mean, we wanted to give an opportunity for all the pro players around the world to show their abilities to play with people of their age. The Oklahoma City Punishers will consist of athletes 50 years and older. Out of the 16 players that are going to be on Oklahoma City's team, one of the eight men and one of the eight women must be 60 plus. Bringing another professional sports team into the city will impact in more ways than one. So once the NPL grows and we work with them in the future, I can see that really developing for chicken and pickle in good ways and them in good ways in the city as a whole too. The NPL season will begin in June. Reporting from Chicken and Pickle in Oklahoma City, Brooklyn Sweet, OU Nightly. The Thunder's playoff hopes still hang in the balance. Standing in their way was the Utah Jazz on Thursday. Early in the final seconds in the first, a clean pass to Isaiah Joe for a wide open three. The Thunder continued that same energy and drive throughout the rest of the game, ultimately allowing them to win 114-98. The Thunder are a win away from making the playoffs. Or the Dallas Mavs have to lose one of their next two games to help out the Thunder in their postseason hopes. The Thunder's next game against the Grizzly Grizzlies on Sunday could make or break this team's dreams. Thanks for watching Big Friday Sports. I'm Kenzie Eiserman. And I'm Addison Arthur. Tune in to OU Nightly on Monday for a recap of this weekend's action in sports. Good night.